everybody, and welcome back for some more EGFC Rocket League. I am Sepplin, joined by the handsome and wonderful Soy. And we are going to be bringing you not one, not two, not three, but three series of Rocket League tonight. We are starting <laughs> with Kanisha's College going up against Marist. And it is going to be, I think, uh, you know, may maybe a little less exciting than we want our first game of the evening to be, just looking at the records of these schools. But we've seen underdog stories hundreds of times. So going into this, truly, I think anything could happen. Yeah, we will have to see. I mean, these are two teams kind of with, with flip-flopped records, right? Maris, they're seven and three on the season. Canisius, they are three and seven, but both teams really looking to bounce back off of losses. Maris, they lost last week to Quinnipiac and Canisius, they're on a two-week losing streak. They're still searching for their first victory of the spring split. Yeah, and that's definitely going to hurt down the line, right? Like you said, they're still searching for that first victory, and I'm afraid to say I'm not sure if Marist is going to be that team to beat, and it's certainly possible. It absolutely is, but Marist took it almost all the way to the end last year. I remember that much. They really ran it down and found themselves near grand finals. I don't recall exactly if they made it, but they've definitely been in a good position this season so far. I believe Marist right now is sitting at... They are first in the Mac. So, yeah, okay, it is first in the Mac. But let's jump in to see if they can hold on to that. Keep these pedals a moving like they want them to be. And now as the clock starts to tick down, it's going to be Maris coming out with ball control early. Yeah, and uh, that's a huge sign for them. I mean, these guys, you know, Tones and company, Tones was the MVP of that run for them in the Mac Conference Finals, too, when they were able to, to take that, that Mac title. And... He's going to be a huge factor, I think, throughout this game, along with Z-Ball. The number of touches that Z-Ball gets, it, it feels like he just grows stronger every time the ball is on the hood of his car. So that's going to be a huge factor. It's time of possession for this Maris offense. The Maris offense is what they are best known for. Their defense is by no means bad, but their offense is really, like you said, where they shine. It's all about Z-Ball and Tones getting up close and personal, finding great touches and great aggression as well. And speaking of aggression, I've got to... Give a hat off to Kanisha so far. Their defense is definitely playing to par with Marist for the majority. Of course, Marist is going to break through as they are expected to, finding that first goal just shy of a minute off the clock. Great pass there from Cypher off the corner. And Cypher, he's kind of the X factor of this Marist offense, the wild card. There are just some touches that he makes that players are not ready for. He puts a lot of power behind his passes and his shots with that Dominus hitbox and he can really be a huge threat for this Red Fox's offense as he sneaks that one underneath the defender and inside the near post. Yeah, speaking of the devil, and he shall appear Cypher coming in hyper-aggressive there, able to get that goal and put Marist up notably earlier than they were able to find that first goal. What was that? Only seven seconds between goals one and two, and if that dictates anything about how Marist is going to take this, I think the tempo is just going to keep getting faster and faster with more and more goals online for them, unless Kanishas can really pull out some stops we have never seen before we'll have to see what they can do and that's been kind of one of the question marks of this canisius team is that they are very good when they get chances the problem is that those chances have kind of come few and far between they almost need the the numerous possessions in order to get their offense going in the first place and with maris really ramping up the pace it makes it very difficult for canisius to maintain possession of the ball in possession is obviously the name of the game, right? That's exactly how this game goes. And you want to keep the momentum exactly where you can. You want to put yourself on the offensive side in the driver's seat, as we often say. And Maris just seems to not want Kanishius to even have a moment to think. They're just going to constantly throw it down, run it down mid, and just go for that goal every single time. And they've only been blacked out twice. Make that three times as I'm Stuff is able to find a phenomenal defensive block and looking to take it all the way. An open goal from Maris, but actually... Their own teammate almost gets in the way there. Glixie goes for the assist. I'm Stuff is going to be able to clean it up, but that was definitely a little closer for comfort than they may have wanted. Maris kind of gets lost here in transition. I think all the players were ready to turn up field, and Kanisha's able to punish. I'm Stuff making that play off the wall, and then, like you said, Glixie not quite able to get that redirect, but if there's one player I'm looking for for the side of Kanisha's, I'm Stuff has to be the guy. He is kind of the initiator uh, of this offense and oh my goodness z-ball with the drop down nearly finding the angle and galixi making that save but z-ball is kind of the the captain of this team he is the right. one who has stepped up at, in that role as the the guy leading this offense and when he gets going he's hard to stop but that one finds his way over the back line and maris offense just keeps rolling yeah, that one just taking it up and over, like you said, Maris, they are rolling through. Tones gives through one defender. I believe that was Storm not able to catch the second and an open goal on the side of Canisius is certainly not what you want to see in a scenario like this one. 
yeah, a rough start for them for sure. And the other X factor for the side of Canisius has to be Shadow Storm. He's made numerous great touches, both offensively and defensively, but he's also been streaky at times. He's had opportunities where he's just been shut out. And even here, look at Marist in transition, just beating out the back line once again. Beating out the back line is the name of the game. And I think Marist has cracked that code pretty early here, Soy. They are coming in hot and hyper aggressive, exactly as they need to be to find these opportunities to strike. Four to one. Can you just get something on the board? But it is just Marist all day long for the time being. Yeah, and right now, Maris has a lot of uh, space to work with. Look at these booming clears, too, from Cypher. Just oh. so many players up. And nearly the double tap off the backboard from Z-Ball. Tones can't find the redirect, but... It's just the key of, you know, we talked about the pace of play for Maris, but this is what the speed allows you to do. It just allows you to continue to pepper the net as Z-Ball does here. Five to one. This is, as I mentioned right at the beginning, kind of the expected outcome so far. Maris has been tearing it up on the season so far and the split as well. They've been coming out super strong and it seems like they are not going to be dropping that ball anytime soon. You mentioned they are coming in off of a loss, I believe. So maybe there's just a wee bit of vengeance coming out from them as well. Yeah, that loss last week was to Quinnipiac and it went to game five, but a lot of the starters were unable to make that game. We got to see, uh, you know, uh, the fun side of Maris, you know, a couple of the, the backups got their, their time in the spotlight, but could not quite get it done. And there's an old saying of, you know, when a, when a good team loses, bet on them the next week. And I feel like Maris, after that loss, they said, we got to get back on track here. We can't drop more Mac games. We got to be able to hold on to that number one seed and give ourselves the best chance here. And the way they're playing right now against Canisius, it feels like they're the victims here. Yeah, it certainly seems like they are. So I think looking a little bit bleak for Canisius in game one. But the beauty of Rocket League is this is a first to three series. So just because they lose this first game certainly does not dictate them losing anymore. Ooh, and I like that play there from Tones. Although that pass doesn't connect, it's showing, you know, the creativity of this offense. There's a lot of times the offenses in Rocket League just kind of come from individual efforts, just air dribbles or backboard right. passes. But now you're seeing Maris, they're starting to find each other already downfield. And it's just, you know, great awareness by the player who's challenging the ball already to know, hey, I've got a man open. Oh. But speaking of open, open net here for Galixi to put a second one on the board for the Griffs. Yeah, maybe a little bit of hubris, a little bit of overconfidence from Maris. They don't think they have to defend their goal as they really have not been letting Canisius get ball control, but Glixi with a great sneak in there, finds the opportunity to strike and takes it. Now with 33 seconds left on the clock, you've only got 11 seconds per goal to tie things up. Is it possible? Yes. Is it probable? A little less so, 30 seconds on the clock and Canisius looking a little strong in the end of game one, but I'm not sure strong enough to walk away with a game one win. And what you're seeing, too, is that the two goals Canisius have, really, are them winning the battle at the midfield line and Maris pressing up too far. That's the downside of, you know, having a player down in the corners already, right. you know, ready for those passes is that you can get beat over top. And that's how Canisius has been able to strike. But that being said, when you're trying to get something done, you're going to run out of time. And you're forced to make plays. They can't find the open net and the clock will expire and the ball will touch the ground. The ball hits the ground. That guarantees a game one victory for Maris. There's only two left between them and a 3-0 victory. But Canisius, like I mentioned, certainly putting up a fight in the latter half of that game. They find a little bit of comfortability. They found some great, what I'm going to refer to as sneak attacks, and they were really able to run away with it. That's just a great start for Maris. Yeah, and, and sneak attack is actually kind of a good term because that's it, it, it's attributed to that that pace of play, right? They right. they find those openings where you think, okay, I have the time to kind of line this shot up. I want to hit this angle. I want to win the challenge this way. And all of a sudden, when you get beat over top, now you're thinking, oh crap, I need to you know hustle back in defense and find myself in rotation again. And that's where you're seeing Canisius kind of fall apart. The second they get beat by the speed of Marist, they're going, okay, well, now where do I need to be? Now where is the rotation going? When you get lost as the first man, second man, you kind of get caught in no man's land. And when you're right. stuck there for too long, you get punished time and time again. And punish is certainly going to be something that we see a lot of from a team like Marist. They are a very high skill level team. They're a team that's great on the offense, great in the defense. And 
if they know how to play the game, if they know how to control the momentum, I think punishes are something we could see a lot of if Canisius didn't play it properly. But like you mentioned, Canisius, they've been doing a great job punishing the overzealousness, the hubris from the side of Maris to keep themselves alive. Not quite a win, but 5-2 is certainly better than it could have been. And as we jump into game two in just a minute here, I'm hoping that Canisius can come out just as strong at the beginning as they were able to play the end of game one. Yeah, and like you're seeing, right, the key for them is those, or, or excuse me, are those counterattacks, right? Because they're able to catch teams over the top. And like we said, their offense, it has strikers. I'm Stuff's been very good this season. Galixie is one of the most technical players on this team. And Shadowstorm has also found some very opportunistic goals to keep right. Canisius alive in, in a couple of their series. The problem is they need that time of possession. And when your offense is constantly being cut off by the speed of Maris, especially through the midfield. You're, see, you're seeing on the other side, Maris, how many of their goals came from just long distance punches over top and then all of a sudden a player following up off of it. It makes it very difficult when you're being kind of cut off at the midfield line to get possession in your opponent's half. Right, and after a bit of a lobby remake, I think we're finally jumping into the second game here. It's going to be five minutes on the clock per the usual. Y'all know the drill. It's going to be Marist versus Canisius here entering game two, and pressure is going to be on. Slow and steady may win the race, but Marist, they want to play it quick as can be. They want to run it down as aggressively as possible, but is Canisius going to let them get away with it so early? The answer, Soy, looks like has already shown its face. That is going to be a 16-second goal for Marist. What a shot from Tones here. Reads this corner bounce so well and then right in the upper 90 off the crossbar and down even if that diving defender gets a touch on it that's still finding its way to the back of the net just beautiful beautiful shot placement for the red foxes yeah but shot placement excuse me was certainly the name of the game there and maris they're in such a great position right now to keep this aggression forward canisius gets ball control for simply a moment and as it's taken away maris desperate to turn this back on its head and right now for Canisius, they're also, at least for now, struggling to get this one on net. That one off the backboard and away. And I'm stuff. Look at how quick this one fo it falls by him too. He thought he was in there at the right position, but just too powerful of a clear. Yeah, it's certainly a powerful clear making an appearance early. Oh man, Maris, they're finding themselves up 2-0 just as quickly as they found themselves up 2-0 last game. Actually, even faster as they didn't score their first goal until four minutes and one second. But this time, they've got two on the board, 4-15 still remains. Canisius, they're going to have to maybe step up their defense just a little bit if they want to stop Marist. But right now, this is the Marist I expected to see tonight. Yeah, that one's tough. Cypher misses that first touch, and I think I'm stuff was expecting that one to be a shot on goal, and it actually puts him in a bad spot inside his own box. He's got to find a way to challenge that ball, but it's so hard to do when you're expecting a touch and all of a sudden the whiff comes through and now you're put in a bad spot. Even here, I'm stuff along the goal line, oh, doesn't wow. find the touch it. Tones taps it in over top of the last defender. Tones going for a slow and steady goal there, kind of waiting on the opportunity to strike, didn't want to overcommit and just goes up and overshadow storm that defense not when they needed it to 404 on the clock defense not found on the side of Canisius. it's going to be Marist up 4-0 early pressure's on once again for Canisius. and I feel like already you're starting to see uh something we've seen in the past is that you know when you're down big and you're down early you feel like you're you're trying to force plays you're trying to you know force your way back into the game by trying to make plays and sometimes that just leads to more mistakes. You know, the, whiff, right. the, the whiffs, the miscues, the bad touches. And already you're seeing a, a, a handful of those mistakes from Canisius. Even there, a double commit gives the ball to Tones just because they're trying to make plays to find their way back into this game. They almost find something there. It's going to be Glixie getting a little bit of ball control, blocks, a def or blocks an offensive play from Maris, but the follow-up just was not there when they needed it. I'm stuffed. Finally getting to put that ball into the into play on Maris' side of the field, but it's just knocked straight back on the goal. Now is somebody going to get in the way, but Z-Ball instead going to take it up and above, trying to clear it downfield. Looks like they're going to be able to put the ball back into the third of Canisius. And I'm stuffed there. He's in a tricky spot on that defensive play because you saw both Maris players right behind that ball. And when you, two players are that close to the ball from I'm stuff's angle, you don't know which one is going to play the ball. Will it be the guy along the wall who's been touching it the whole time? Or will he opt to pass it off, which changes the angle of your approach? And just those types of plays are making it really difficult for Canisius to, to get a read on where to be. 
attempts coming out from Glixie, but unfortunately no follow-up. We are now entering the second half of the game. If Canisius wants to put this game on lock, they're going to need to do so right here, right now. They've got, what is that, 120 seconds left, or 140 left on the clock, trying to go score against Maris, and unfortunately this is going to be a Hail Mary up and over play from Cypher to keep that lined up once again. Yeah, look at this shot too. I mean, I'm stuff is ready for it. He's he's up for that clear, but I'm not sure if he just misjudged the angle or if it had too much power. But Cipher is the benefactor there, just clearing that one from midfield and putting it on goal. No one again on the on the defensive line of the Griffs ready for it. Not much left to be said here in game two, unless Canisius can truly give us the playstyle of a lifetime once again. Is it possible? Yes. Is it probable? Certainly less so. We're going to have to wait to see what Canisius can do. 120 seconds remain. It's only been 20 seconds, but Canisius has had ball control for maybe one of them. Marist coming in through large and in charge into the midfield. A great demo from I'm Stuff. Finding tones. That star starting player offline for two whole seconds, but Canisius just not able to capitalize off the back of it. Kind of an awkward play there defensively from Z-Ball, and that's going to give a chance to I'm Stuff. And now you're starting to see Canisius. They're trying to ramp up the pace. That's something they've done in the past, too. That physicality later in the series, they try and adapt their game to you know, allow for more bumps and demos to try and buy themselves more space. And you're starting to see that here with you know, just over a minute or under a minute 20 remaining. This is one of those games, Sawyer, I think we're going to have to write it off just a little bit early as there's truly not much Canisius can do. We're looking at a goal per basically 10 seconds. And right now with the way Canisius has not been able to break through this insane offense from Maris, I'm not sure we're going to see much. Tones just barely able to sneak it in, trying to keep Canisius at that goose egg. And I think they're going to be able to do so. 52 seconds left on the clock. Maris large and in charge. Yeah, and this is, like we said, this is the Maris offense that, you know, we weren't able to see last week, but this is what makes them so threatening. They just continue to hound the blue box in front. A couple of saves here from the Canisius defense, but difficult touch after difficult touch, and the boost starting to get low on a couple of these defenders, but that's a huge whiff, and I'm stuff trying to get back to that ball. Had boost, but couldn't get there in time. Just the speed of the Red Foxes taking over this series. The Red Foxes are playing just like that. I think you've said it very well, my friend. They are coming in large and in charge. I just said that, but I guess I'm going to say it again. Eight seconds left, and Canisius finally breaking through. They're going to be able to find a goal in the final eight seconds, and that's certainly not going to win them game two, but there's some momentum carrying them into game three here. They've got a little bit of momentum. Can they do anything with it in that third and possibly final game? That was actually a crazy pinch off the wall there. Great read by I'm Stuff to catch that defender off guard and a, a beneficial angle for the Griffs gives them a goal in this series, which does help your goal differential. But the problem is you're out of time. And with that, Maris are on match point. Match point Maris there waiting for that opportunity to strike. Once again, they are coming back with a vengeance. Like we mentioned, they are taking games one and two in an in insane fashion. I just am not sure, Soy. It feels like we're maybe looking at a bit of a, a, I hate to say it, but perhaps a bit of a team diff here as Maris just seems to be able to break through anything Canisius is able to bring to the table. It, it's unrelenting pressure. That speed is just so difficult to deal with. And I'm, we've talked to, you know, some of the teams here at the EGF that, you know, are at the top of the rankings. And some of them have cited, you know, we feel like our speed is, is our key. We play faster than everyone else. And, for Maris, that seems to be the case here. They are just playing at a faster pace than Canisius. And I think part of that, too, is that Canisius did go through a little bit of a roster change this uh, you know, this season, right. really, with uh, a humble potato, you know, graduating, really. And then they have to, you know, have that third role. And a humble potato was a huge part of that offense because he right. was the guy initiating the offense. He was the guy going for the air dribbles. Oh. And now it's up to Shadowstorm to kind of fill his shoes and that is a difficult difficult task to do a difficult task indeed soy and like you mentioned team synergy in a game like rocket league almost more than any other esport off the top of my head synergy is so important and to be swapping out your roster to be subbing players in and out it's going to be really difficult to find that synergy but teams like marist you know they bring out a lot of the same guys every week we're seeing the same players kind of over and over and that synergy is of course going to build over time there's few better places to learn 
few better places to improve than a collegiate setting like this one. And Marist, as many games as they win, we know they are learning and improving off the back of each and every one of them. Absolutely. I remember interviewing Marist after one of their wins last split, and they said, you know, they were just kind of getting acclimated to, to playing new teams. There was a huge storyline right. of the fact that they really couldn't get a win outside of the MAC conference. But this season, now they've gotten, I think, three wins out of conference as Tones puts in the first goal of game number three. And just that experience has really helped them and shaped them this season. This season may be the one where Marist can take it all the way. Like you mentioned, you know, they struggled to break through that barrier of outside the MAC conference. They are looking to make sure there is no barrier to be broken this time. They want to run it down before they even have to look at it. And speaking of running things down, Marist seems to be doing just that against Canisius. Three minutes and 50 seconds remain. Only one point on the board. Can Canisius win? Absolutely. But Soy, I think we're going to have to see a brand new play style, unlike anything we've seen from them so far tonight. Yeah, and right now I think the biggest key for them is that either they've they've got to try and match this pace of play, which is really difficult to do, or they've got to find those bumps, the physicality. They've got to right. do something to slow down Marist and taking boost off the board by, you know, via a bump or a demo is a huge way to do so because look at all the space they have for this air dribble. A Z ball makes it two to nothing. Yeah, absolutely absurd. You know, Soy, I am I'm an unbelievable fan of that physicality. I love to see the players bring that to the table. I think it can take a good team and turn them into a great team if they can play with those bumps, if they can play with those demos, those rule ones, and so on. And I think that really could go the extra mile for Canisius when they need it most. If they can meet Marist in the middle and just start kicking the crap out of Marist the same way Marist is kicking the crap out of them, I think Canisius could hold this team to their own. The problem is right now, too, you're seeing from players, especially like Cypher here, those booming clears are allowing that ball, you know, to just, it's almost like dump and chase in hockey, right? You just get right. it down into the corners and it forces everyone on Canisius onto that back line and they have to gather boost and then reposition themselves to get back to the car, or excuse me, to get back to the ball. And that allows Marist to say, okay, they're gonna approach from this exact angle. I can beat them to it. Canisius, they've got to find a way to stop these booming clears. They've got to pinch down offensively when they have the ball in scenarios just like this. Don't let the booming clears happen. And right now, you see Tones can't quite get a clean clear there, but Cypher quickly in transition to Tones. And just like that, Maris is back on the offense. Maris, that seems to be the only place they can be, So Every time they're forced into the defense, I think the longest defense we've seen from them so far may have been a whopping five seconds. As can you just look at the ball control for just a moment, Maris comes through, they find it again, and they will truly begin to bully Canisius a bit, trying to find their own footing and make sure Canaris, uh, Canisius just can't play the game. Yeah, that sustained pressure is a huge part of Rocket League because the defense can only have so much boost for so long. And Maris, that's something they've really, I think, improved upon is their boost control and their ability to steal boost from the defensive side, just make life difficult as Cypher makes it three to nothing. I lag out in my back. Oh, I hear you now. <laughs> I think I lagged out. Whatever. I was just saying, Maris, they are looking good. I and mean, Kanish just with only 104 seconds left. I am not sure if they're going to be able to pull this one out. Well, they need something and they need it now. But again, that that sustained pressure I was talking about, it's been very difficult for Kanishas to keep the ball on the hood of their car. Those touches off the sidewall, that's not the cleanest one as Tones is going to chip it up. But I'm stuff only getting a piece of it and still the positioning of Maris too. It feels like they're in the, the right place, you know, 99% of the time because right. Canisius, they just, you know, th the way they're hitting the ball, it's just forcing possession back into the orange half. And that gives Maris the opportunity to break out for these clears. One minute remaining. We'd need one goal for 20 seconds from Canisius here, simply to tie the game up, not even to win it. And then if they won that game, they'd still have to go and win two more soy. So they are looking at a Herculean task. As we often say in a different game we cast together, this could be a pivotal moment for Maris here in the spring split. They are looking absolutely phenomenal. They are looking to get this win back, kind of walk away from that loss last week, learning and improving. And improving they certainly are. They are looking to completely shut out Canisius tonight. 
It just 30 seconds left, and this is a return to form for the side of the Red Foxes, but one for the road here for Galixi. There's still plenty of time left. The Griffs could do this, but like you said, this is a tough task. The way that Maris' defense has been playing, it's situations like that that the Griffs have capitalized on, but those are few and far between. Few and far between, indeed. We need one goal per 11 seconds from the side of Canisius right now. A difficult task, not one that is impossible, but one we certainly do not expect to see here tonight as that timer begins to tick away. Canisius, unfortunately, is staring down the wrong side of a 3-0 loss. And with that, you know, short time of remaining, like you said, the sweep is on deck here. And as the, the ball touches the ground, the clock hits zero. Maris, they get the brooms out. They get the victory. And they hold on to that number one seed in the MAC conference. That number one seed can go miles for them. And they are, like you said, holding on to it another day. And just like that, our first series has already come to a close. A shockingly quick one. I believe we've even got a little bit of time before the next one. But we are going to an interview first. So use this time. Get up. Use the restroom. Get some water. Do whatever you got to do. But come right back here for our first interview of the night in just a bit. We'll see you then. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back. I'm still Septulence. That is still Soy, and this time we are met. We are greeting with Cipher, one of the players from Marist College, who just walked away with a 3-0 victory. So, Cipher, my first question for you is, of course, what do you think Marist did differently here? What do you think gave you guys the leg up to walk away with such an aggressive victory like we saw tonight? Uh, yeah, so uh, Canisius, I think, gave us a little too much space. Uh, it's been a little while since we've felt confident in our ability to, to get on offense and to score. And I think today it was, it was a lot of just staying really tight on our rotations. Um, I think our one of our biggest issues is that we'll have these opportunities, you know, from the center off the backboard and uh, it's just our rotations are too loose, we're too far back, and then the opportunity comes and goes and the team just takes it away. Um, but today we, we focused extra on kind of 
uh, staying in tight rotations, and sometimes we got beat, um, but a lot of the time we were able to get even more pressure on offense and, and start putting things into the back of the net. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think it was kind of a, a sloppy start for us, but I think as the games kind of went on, we we had a better idea of, of how we wanted to play offense, and it started to click, and we started to score. Certainly showed. Uh, and this is another kind of MAC conference game. Next week, uh, you guys get... Iona, who's another team that's kind of on the rise in the MAC conference. How do you prepare for these uh, in-conference games? Yeah, so Iona is actually kind of interesting because we—I don't think we've actually played them before. Because I think they're new to the the, the Rocket League scene for MAC. Um, but I know they they started off pretty hot in the, in the fall semester, and I had watched some of their games. Uh, so for us, it's kind of a unique challenge because I don't think we've we've played them at least not their their starting roster. So. Uh, we'll be watching some games, kind of figuring out what they like to do. Um, probably we we like to scrim a lot of the MAC teams because we're you know we're all friends here, so uh, we scrim like Fairfield and Siena here and there. So we'll get some practice against some of those top teams in the MAC, and hopefully uh, we can figure out a strategy for Iona. Yeah, absolutely. Very nicely said, my friend. So one more question for you. You know, not focusing on the game, but focusing on you a little more as an esports collegiate player. Is there anybody you want to give a general thank you or just a shout out to before we let you go? Yeah, so I always shout out my teammates. Uh, poor Z-Ball literally got out of class like the second we were making the lobby. We had to get him in at the last second. Um, and, and Anthony, which is Tones, uh, for helping me learn some new things today. Um, and then also, of course, I'll shout out Kinesis for, for the good series. Uh, looking forward to the upcoming MAC tournament. We hope to, to see them sometime there. Um, and I'll say thanks to my friends, uh, Ian and Eugene, who are stopping by and, and supporting, which is always nice. Um, and of course, Mayor's Esports as a whole, who is always extra supportive. Um, we've got a really great group of guys here, and uh, we love playing for them. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Very nicely said, my friend. Well, Cypher, we will let you go. You know, tell your teammates as well. A huge congrats. You guys really kicked some butt tonight, and I as well am very excited to see what you guys do in that upcoming MAC conference. So we'll see you then. Awesome. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank you. And with that, folks, we are going to be throwing it to a longer break, I believe. I believe the next game is scheduled for 9.45 EST, so I believe we've got about 14 minutes until the next game comes through. Use this time, maybe get a meal, maybe use the restroom, do whatever, but come right back here at 9.45 for our next game, which is going to be Quinnipiac versus Iona. Destiny be a good one. We'll see you then.